4x minus the 2, that's what you would have gotten if you distribute it. So when you distribute, remember that means you're multiplying from the outside to the inside. So we're taking the 8 and we're multiplying it by 3x. So 8 times 3x is going to give you 24x. Then you're multiplying the 8 times a negative 2. Don't forget that that minus sign indicates that it is a negative. So 8 times negative 2 gives you a negative 16. And because the sign is negative, that means the operation is going to become a minus sign. So we have 24x minus 16. You cannot do 24x minus 16 because they are not like terms. That's as simplified as it's going to get. Okay, what about for problem number two? Who can tell me what they got for problem number two? Brian. Not 12x minus uh, 12. EJ? Close, not negative 5x plus 12. Do you think you know it, Julian? You wanna try? Not quite. Kingston. Mm -mm. I'll give one more try. Alex? No, let me go. It's going to be negative 5x minus 12. So it's negative 5x minus 12, not plus 12, EJ. Um, I'm going to go over it. So let's take a look. First thing that you have to do that you need to understand is that this minus 2 is actually a negative two when you are distributing. It is a negative. So you are doing negative two times the four X, which is gonna give you negative eight X. Then you're going to do negative two times a positive six. Negative two times positive six gives you negative 12. It gives you a negative 12. You still have this 3x, though, from the very beginning. You have to distribute first before you can combine any like terms. Now that you have this, you can focus on combining those like terms. So if we write all this side by side, we've got 3x minus 8x minus 12. We can now combine these together. We can do 3x minus 8x. That gives us a negative 5x. 3x minus 8x gives us negative 5x, and then we still have that minus 12 that doesn't have anything in common, so it's still minus 12. There's your final answer. Negative 5x minus 12. Again, that minus 2, when you are focusing on it, the operation in front of it indicates the sign of the number. So you're distributing a negative 2 to each component. EJ? Remember, when, like I said, when you're splitting it up into terms, so I'm covering the 3x because I'm not using it. So that's, yeah, it was subtraction, but if I cover the 3x, that subtraction now looks like it's a what? A negative sign, right? When I cover it, it now looks like it's a negative 2 instead of subtracting 2. That's why the sign in front, the operation in front, will indicate the sign. Harmon? Um, uh, you can't do that. You have to distribute first. That's really key that you guys keep that in mind, that if you've got distributive property showing here, you have to distribute before you can combine. Okay? All right, take a look at the last one then, problem number three. Problem three, what did you guys get? Um, let's see here. Trevor, what did you get? Very good. 25x minus 6. So, again, let's go on ahead and go over that one. So, that minus 3, again, if I cover that 13x, that minus 3 now looks like a negative 3. Now it looks like a negative three. So we're gonna take that negative three and we're going to distribute it to each component. So I'm gonna do negative three times two, which gives me negative six. 
and I'm going to do a negative 3 times a negative 4x. So negative 3 times negative 4x gives me a positive 12x. It gives me a positive 12x. What's wrong, sweetie? Negative 6. You got negative 6 what? No, not minus 25. It would be plus 25x. If you, if you reverse the orders, it would be negative 6 plus 25x instead of minus. All right. Now we still have that 13x that's going to come down in the front. Shh. So if I piece this all together and write it as a problem, I've got 13x minus 6 plus 12x. So 13x and the 12x, the positive 12x, are the like terms. Those are the ones that are in common. So we can do 13x plus 12x to get 25x. Then we still have that minus 6 all by itself. So there's our final answer then, 25x minus 6. Any questions? All right, go ahead and flip on over to page 35 for our notes today. It'd be negative six, if you were to flip around, it'd be negative six plus 25x. Remember these two, since they're both positive, you can combine them together through addition. That minus sign only belongs to six, not to these two. Page 35. All right, so we're going to focus on adding and subtraction. Oh, I should say subtracting, adding and subtracting, we'll just change it, adding and subtracting linear expressions. So when we're talking about linear expressions, you guys saw both linear and nonlinear outside in the hall with the, the math lib. That, that was both linear expressions and nonlinear expressions. When we talk about linear expressions, which is what we're mainly going to be focusing on for the remainder of the year, we're talking about um, expressions in which the variable is raised to the power of 1. So if it has any other exponent for the variable, we're not talking about a number, we're talking about the variable. If the variable has any other exponent besides a 1, then it would not be linear. But if the exponent is just a 1, or you know the variable is written without anything, any exponent at all, then that means it is a linear expression. So again, it's an algebraic expression in which the variable is raised to a power of 1, or raised to the first power. So some examples for, for linear expressions versus nonlinear expression. If it's linear, so, you know, 5x is considered to be linear. Nonlinear would be something like 5x squared. Now, if it said 5 squared x, that would be fine. 5 squared is just the number. But you can't let the variable be squared. Okay, if we have 3x plus 2, that's fine. But if you have 3x to the third power plus 2, that's not fine. If you have x minus 7, that's fine. But if you have x minus 7 in parentheses raised to the second power, that's not fine. So linear versus nonlinear. We're going to focus on 
adding and subtracting quantities of linear functions right now or linear expressions right now. Huh? What? That's for the whole thing. That's basically saying x minus 7, that quantity, times x minus 7. And so in a situation like this, that would actually become the expression x to the second power minus 14x plus 49. So x minus 7 raised to the second power, that's what that would equal. You're going to be getting into that next year in algebra. Hmm? We could ask you, is this a linear or nonlinear expression? All right. So taking a look here, as it's the same idea as what we were doing with simplifying expressions, except this time, you've got what we call a quantity that's inside parentheses that you are either adding or subtracting with another quantity. Okay, so what you're doing is you're still trying to find those commonalities, those, those like terms. This is indicating the operation that's going to occur from one to the other. It does not, however, indicate the operation of the answer. Remember, always the operation for your answer is indicated by what sign your answer is. So if your second value the answer of your second value is positive, then it's a plus. If the second answer is a negative, then it's a minus. Okay, you have to keep that in mind. This does not indicate your answer. It only tells you what you're doing from one part to the next. So if we start off with the 2x, I know again that I'm going to add, because I have an addition between the quantities, I'm going to add it with x. Please keep in mind, always, guys, if x doesn't have a value written there, what exists? A 1. Very good. So we have this as 2x plus 1x. What is that going to give us? 3x. Then we have a positive 3. Again, we are adding a positive 4. So now we've got 3 plus 4. What is that going to give me? Tell me the sign. Positive. Positive 7. I want you to state if it's positive or negative so that you know what operation you're going to put with your answer. Because it was a positive 7, our answer is 3x plus 7. And that's it. That is our final answer. So again, all you're doing is going from one component and either adding or subtracting with another component. So let's take a look here. If we've got 2x plus 3, and now we're subtracting 5x minus 12, 2x plus 3, and we're going to subtract 5x minus 12. We're going to focus on the 2x and the 5x, and what operation am I going to do? Subtract. It's a subtraction in between them, isn't it? So we're going to subtract 2x minus 5x. What do we get when we subtract 2x minus 5x? Negative 3x. Good. Then we've got a positive 3. And we are subtracting a negative 12. So what's 3 minus negative 12? Serious? 
15. Positive or negative? Positive or negative, Sirius? Positive. So I want to put a plus sign in front of it because here's where the biggest mistake is. People see, oh, well, this was a subtraction problem, so it must be a minus 15. But it's not. You were adding 15 because the answer you got here was a positive answer. So that's going to be a positive 15. Your final answer in this case is negative 3x plus 15, and then you are done. So as I've said before, your answer is going to indicate what your operation is going to be. Go ahead and go to page 36. I narrow it down. All right. We have three times the quantity of two X minus four plus the quantity 3x minus 7. 3 times the quantity of 2x minus 4 plus 3 times, or the plus the quantity of 3x minus 7. Now remember, in a situation like this, we cannot combine until we do what? Distribute. You have to distribute first. Please make sure you write that on the side that you must distribute. You have to distribute. So we're going to take that 3 and we're going to distribute it to the 2x and to the negative 4. So we're doing 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 4. What's 3 times 2x? 6x. Good. What's 3 times negative 4? Negative 12. So this now becomes 6x minus 12. So once I've distributed that 3, 3 times 2x, 3 times negative 4, I get 6x minus 12 here. Now I can focus on adding that 3x minus 7 by combining those like terms with addition. So we're going to do 6x plus 3x. What is 6x? plus 3x is going to give us 9x. Then we've got negative 12. That's a negative. And we are adding a negative 7. So what's negative 12 plus negative 7? Negative 19. Good. So we get negative 19. So there's our final answer, 9x minus 19. You get your 9x minus your 19. I want you guys to go ahead and try a couple of these on your own. Huh? What, the problems?
minus sign is in between both quantities. So that means it's 5 minus 9 x squared. Then we've got 7 minus negative 4 x. All right. If you can raise your hand, tell me what they got for number 4. Um, AJ. Huh? Negative 4 x plus 11. Negative 4x plus 11. So let's take a look. Shh. In the back. Hush. We've got that 5x minus the 9x. So you're just doing 5x minus 9x. Gives you a negative 4x. Then you've got a positive 7 minus a negative 4. So 7 minus negative 4 gives you a positive 11. So when you piece it together, you're going to have the negative 4x plus 11. Negative 4x plus 11. Okay? 5x minus 9x. Okay. Um, yeah. Five x minus nine x. That minus sign in between them tells you what to do from this parenthesis set to this parenthesis set. Okay. Again, it's plus eleven because you've got a positive seven over here that you're subtracting. Right, that's in between our parentheses set. So what we're doing from this parentheses to this parentheses is subtraction. So seven minus negative four. Seven minus negative four is the same thing as saying seven plus four, which is 11. Okay, what about for problem number five? Kristen, what'd you get? Oh, so close. So, so, so close. Uh, Allison? Say it louder. 7x minus 15. So, so, so close. 7x minus 15. So the first thing that you have to do, it's 7x minus 15. First thing you have to do is distribute. You have to distribute first. So that 2 is going to be multiplied to the 3x. Shh, guys, there's some people who don't understand. So quiet, please. We're going to do 2 times 3x, which is 6x. Then we're going to do 2 times negative 4, which is a negative 8. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So now you've got 6x minus 8 for this parentheses set. You still have that plus sign in between the parentheses. Then you've got x minus 7 here. Now you can start combining your like terms. 7x plus 1x. I'm sorry, not 7x. 6x plus 1x is going to give you 7x. 
then you've got negative 8 plus negative 7. Negative 8 plus negative 7 gives you a negative 15. So your final answer is 7x minus 15. 7x minus 15. All right. Let's go to the next page, page 37. Now, like I've said before, it's not always going to be, it's not always going to be, um, you know, simple problems that are straightforward like this. You're going to have word problems. You're going to have some word problems that come in. So you need to know how to be able to handle the word problem situations as well, okay? You got to hurry up. Here's the thing, Brian, you were talking about a lot back there, so I need you to focus and get it written, okay? All right, so let's say that we have a triangle. And my triangle, I'm going to label this as 3x minus 3. And this side, I'm going to label it as 5x. And then the third side, I have no clue. This is page 37. So I've got 3x minus 3, I've got 5x, and then I have absolutely no idea. What's wrong? How would you know what the other side is? No, no, this is a scalene triangle. They're all different sides. Okay. <laughs> not drawn to scale. So, you know, just because it might look like it's the same, it's not the same. Okay, so in a problem like this, they might give you something like the perimeter. So I'll say the perimeter of the triangle. And again, what, what do we mean by perimeter? The total, if you add everything together for that triangle, I think I misspelled. If you add all three sides together for that triangle, please put your feet off the table then that's going to give us 10x plus 6. I'm saying that that's my perimeter. If I add all three sides together, I'm going to get 10x plus 6. So I want to know what is that expression of our missing side? So what expression represents the missing side? So again, I know the perimeter, and I know two of the three sides, and I also know that perimeter happens to be the addition of all the sides. So I could even write it down that, hey, perimeter equals side number one plus side number two plus side number three. So if I know perimeter and two of the sides, how would I find out the third side? Don't focus on the letters or anything like that. Just think of the situation. You know the perimeter. You know two of the side measurements. What would you do to find the third, Mia? Very good. She says she would add the two sides she does know and then subtract that from the perimeter. Or another way of saying it is just take the perimeter and subtract each of the sides away from it. So we could easily say, hey, perimeter minus side one and then minus side two would equal side three. If I subtract side one away and then I subtract side two away, I'll now have the third side. So let's fill that in. What was the perimeter again? Joel? 10x plus 6. So I'm going to write in my quantity, in my parentheses, 10x plus 6. Then I'm going to subtract one of the sides. Does it matter which side? No. So we'll just say, hey, I'm going to subtract 3x 
minus 3 Julian. Then I'm going to subtract my second side, which is 5x. And that should equal my question mark, my third side that's missing. Do we have anything that needs to be distributed here? No. There's no distribution that needs to happen, so now we can focus on just going from one quantity, subtracting the next quantity, and subtracting the next. So let's start with the 10x. We're going to do 10x. Again, we're going to subtract 3x. And then we're going to subtract 5x. So what is 10x minus 3x minus 5x going to give us? Go ahead. 2x. Okay, 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 minus 5 is 2. So you get 2x. Then we're going to do the same thing for those constants. That positive 6 minus that negative 3. I don't have anything else to subtract because I don't have a constant over here. What is 6 minus negative 3 going to give us? Huh? Why did I put this negative here? I, I just do it. I do it a little bit higher so you can see that it's not a subtraction sign. But it's going to be what, Chris? 9. Well, when they have, if, I mean, it's just no different if it's written like this. Still the same. Still negative, minus negative 9, okay? Um, so it should be a plus 9. So that means that's our final answer. Our side 3 is going to be equal to 2x plus 9, and you are done. That's side 3. Harmon? Yes. Well, I was showing you that the idea of perimeter is adding all sides. We don't know side 3, but we already know the perimeter. Usually, usually you know all three sides and you don't know the perimeter. So you would have added them all together. But in this case, we know the perimeter and we know two of the sides. So to get the third, instead of adding everything, we're subtracting it from the perimeter. No, no, we knew the perimeter. It's right here in the problem, right? Joel? What do you mean if you didn't have two of the sides? Well, you would... They would need to give you two of the sides in order for you to be able to do the third. Or they'd have to give you information like, oh, it's an equilateral triangle, meaning that all three of them are the same. Okay, go out in the hall and answer it. All right. Let's take a look at another problem. Let's say that we've got the cost of some hats. So we're going to a game, a football game, and you're wanting to have either hats or shirts for your family so that you guys are supporting your team. Okay, and the cost of the hats is going to be 2x minus 3, and the cost of the shirts is 5x plus 1. And you're wanting to buy everybody at least a hat or a t-shirt. So overall... You find out you need to buy three hats and two shirts. And I want to know what's the final cost. So do I know what X equals? No. I don't have a value for X. No. I don't have an amount for X. I don't know what X is. I just know that hats are 2x minus 3, and I want to buy three of them. So how do I write that I want to buy three hats at the cost of 2x minus 3? What would that look like? What do you think, Joel? Very good. So when you're setting that up, you would write it as 3 and then the parentheses, 
So that means that we're going to have to distribute. So we have 3 times a quantity of 2x minus 3 in parentheses. Same thing for the shirts. I want two shirts. So that means I'm going to have to do 2 times the quantity of 5x plus 1. And if I'm wanting to find that final cost, am I adding or subtracting these? Adding, right? We add the cost of the hats and the shirts together. All right, so what do we have to do first? Justin? Huh? Not 3 plus 2. Distribute. You have to distribute first, so we have to do... 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 3. Then we have to do 2 times 5x and 2 times 1. What's 3 times 2x going to give us? 6x. What's 3 times negative 3? Negative 9. Plus, what's 2 times 5x? 10x. And then 2 times 1? 2. two. Okay, so then there is our setup. After we've distributed, that's what it looks like, and now we start combining like terms. So we do 6x plus 10x. What's 6x plus 10x going to give us? 16x. Then we do negative 9. That minus 9 now acts like a negative 9, but we're going to add it with a positive 2. What's negative 9 plus 2? Not negative 11. Negative 7. <laughs> so there's your final answer. 16x minus 7. Okay. Obviously, we didn't really have time to do the we do practice, but we'll do that tomorrow in class together. Go ahead and pack up.